So this is a quick video on how to use the new timeline feature, which is a part of coming out as part of Titan version 15. It's a fantastic new feature and it changes the way you can do time code. So right now I've got a time code set up with Winamp running on my computer. So I've got a Winamp window running separately. Uh, and another feature of Titan 15 is multiple time code slots. So looking at here, I have four sets of time code. This makes it easy to switch between time code and use it for different things. Uh, so I've got time code one set up. It is enabled, linked to Winamp. If I hit play, I'll have that track start playing in the background. I'll reset that now. All right. I've also got a little basic stage thing, little basic stage in my capture visualizer here. I've got some blinders either side, just on a fader or a timed flash. Um, I have my intensity and some positions saved in this cue list here. That just goes through a couple of different positions and loops around. And I have a set of colors. And this is fades through with a delay across between all those colors. So I'll release everything. I want to create my timeline. So to record a new timeline, it's like recording anything on AVO. Hit record. And I now have the option under chase and cue list is create timeline. So once I select that, I choose a handle and we're ready to go. So it's created my timeline. Uh, timeline view. And just to make sure. I will link it up so you can see it's now connected. But using the options menu, I can choose different time. Loads. So I can actually choose which time code source I want to use. Time code wants what I want, so I'll leave it at that. It is enabled, so my time code source is linked. And we're ready to start. So the timeline window can be broken up into tracks, which makes it very easy to keep control, especially if you have a big timeline with lots of cue lists firing. So it's a great idea to break up your tracks either into different fixtures types, different sections, uh, different parts or different, so maybe moves, colors, that sort of thing. It's a huge organizational asset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it for my different fixtures here. So my first one, get out of there, to name it set legend, and I'll call this uh, magic dots because those are my fixtures. All right, and I'm ready to record some stuff. So all I have to do to record, I can record as I'm going and anything I do, so my using my fader, hitting go, it will record all those steps into the timeline. So I'll make sure recording is armed. By default, it selects the first available track and it's ready to record. If I hit replay now, it'll start the timeline and I can start triggering some clips. So I'll stop it there, I'll disable recording. And as you can see, it has now saved all of those parameters in here for me. It's done a quick smooth on that fader up position. And each of my steps have gone as a go-to. So you can see my queue number listed there. So three, four, five, and then back to one. So it's actually treating the queue directly, not just the go button step. And that's very important, we'll come back to that later. So if I hit play now, I'll see it play back exactly how I ran it. I'll release all my queue lists. So there it is. I'm not happy with the start there. I actually triggered too early and faded in too late. So what I'd like to do is I want to move my first trigger. So I could just select that and then use my wheels. I can move that down. I can actually click and drag as well if I want to move it directly. So I want to, have, I want to trigger that very quickly. I want it to be into the queue list straight away. And I want to start my fade sooner. So back on the wheels as well. I'll move the time down to trigger. So the line after the go to is where the actual marker starts, where it's actually triggered. Uh, so it's going up to 100%, but I actually want to go over a bit 
longer fade. So I can use my fade scroll here to stretch it right out to before it starts that new cue. And now if I run it, All right, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I can lock that cue list off or that track off because I don't want to make any changes. I want to lock that one in and not accident record over it at this point in time. What I want to do is I want to add a blinder track now. So, or a blinder section. So I'll add a new blank track. So clicking plus blank track, set legend to change the name and I'll call that blinders. And again, I'm ready to record. So rewind, I'll record enable. And as you see, it's selected the blinder track now. It's the one in red. That's where we're going to be recording. And if I hit play, I'm ready to start. So I'll disable recording. I've now got my blinder track in here. If I hit play. So as you see, I've got some fader moves here first. So, and it's cleaned up that. So it's more of a smooth fade rather than every individual step, which can get quite messy and jittery. Um, but I decided I don't really like that. I just want the blinders coming in is where I had them going with the flash buttons just here. Uh, so what I might do is I'll, I could just select these. So I'll go delete and I'll select all those markers and confirm. And now I've deleted that first fader part and we're just going to see the flashes here. Um, another great part is we can actually even make markers into this timeline. So I want to mark where my blinders start. So about here, if I scroll through to about here, I want to add a marker here. So I'll click add marker, record at live time, and just like anything else, set legend, I'll click on that marker and I'll call that blinders as well. So now I know this is where the blinders kick in. So this makes it easy to kind of see what's happening at a bird's eye view over your timelines. And you can add heaps of markers in. You can put the markers in before you even start recording as a breakdown of where the chorus is, uh, what things need to happen so you need know when something's about to start or as kind of a framework for your programming. Uh, it can even be just reminders for when you're running a cue list or a time code show of things you need to know that's going to happen along the way. So when people come on stage. All right, so now I've got a mark in there. It doesn't actually affect anything with the running off the cue list. There is another option here though. We have some other things like a wait for go, which is an interesting command as well. And so for that, we'll start a new timeline. So as before, record, create timeline, put this one next to it. And I'll release everything for now. So this one, I don't actually want a time code source for this. I want this one to run internally. And I just want to use this as a source for building up a live kind of sequence of events rather than saving a queue list, saving all those steps together and be able to get that timing just right. All right, so what I'll do is I'll run this time code separately and it'll run internally. So it's unlinked to anything. It's just going to run its own internal time code clock. And I'll be able to chuck in some playbacks in here straight away. So I hit record and start playing. Got some color moves in there. All right, so there's my time code, my internal timeline. Uh, so first of all, 
I've chucked in some blindness. Maybe I don't want to do that. So I can just delete that whole line. So I delete, select that, confirm. I've got my blinders taken out of this timeline now. So I've just got the two tracks that I want in here. And we can jump to the time just to see what's happening. And so an interesting part we've got, I can actually add maybe just here, just after that part. Because you have lots of color steps in there. But I want to hold here for a second. So I'll add in a point. I'll add in a wait for go command just there and record at live time over my soft keys over here. And then I want to fire off this section and wait again. So I'll add another wait for go in here, record at live time. And there are my two hold points. So now if I rewind and I play this back, it'll play, but it'll wait for me to tell it to go again here. So I'll play. All right, so it's just gonna wait here and it'll wait here and as long as it needs to until I hit go again, I'll hit play and it will fire off that next section. Waiting again and then we'll continue on with the rest of the show. So this is very powerful. It means you can create a very complicated, essentially queue list and have wait points before you create next sections of queues. So you can build out a whole show on your timeline and just have those wait points. So this could be used for theater, for corporate, for that sort of stuff where you just need to stop and wait and then continue on. But it means you can be build very complicated layered, layered style queue lists. So rather than having every individual queue, which would take a long time to program all of these queues into a queue list, you can very quickly pump it out, go back and make those edits and get the timing just right where things line up and stuff, but still have it function as a semi-traditional queue list. All right, so back in my first queue list, I wanna add another track. I wanna add back in colors, but I, want, I, I know exactly where I want those to go in. So I'm gonna add, first I'm gonna add a new blank track. Actually, no, I can add this. I can, this can be part of, my, part of my magic dots. So in here, I wanna also add, uh, maybe it changes color just here. So I want to add a new playback. So I want to add a go to to for my colors playback. I'll select my cue. I want it to go uh, yellow and I want it to happen at the reference time. So I've now added a cue in just here. So rather than having to do that on the fly with the record function, I can add them straight in. So now just afterwards that next section, I want it to turn another color. So I'd Another go-to command, I'll select the playback I want to use, set my target queue as cyan, and set it at the reference time. So now if I rewind, I can play that back and I should see it change color at these points. One last thing to look at is a couple of the options up here. So you've also got a table view. So this will give you the traditional time code layout as a queue list. So you can see everything that's happening. So all through here, you can see every step, all your markers and all the queue triggers in here. So I want to change this queue to here. I want to jump to a different queue in my queue list. So to do that, I've got it selected here. So now I'll open the table view. I can see that that actual position is already highlighted for me here. And I've got the entire queue list of, well, entire timeline of steps listed out in time order here for me. So I want to change this. I want to go to a different queue. So I can select that and change my target queue. So target queue is, I'm going to say I want to go to queue four. And now instead of, it's going from queue one to queue four. If I close that and play again, I can see I've got now show me queue four here. Play. play. see it jumps straight to Q4. And the benefit of this is because it's a go-to queue, it's going to save that directly. It's not going to change how it affects afterwards. So my next queue will still go to Q3, which is what it should have been. So using go-to queues, we can step between queue lists all over the place. And that's how I use it to change colors directly to the color you want. All right, so that's most of the features of the new timeline function in Titan version 15.